goalkeeper Martin Hodge will have to own up as to why Stoke went two up. A right carry on till Wayne Biggins found the net. It was Biggins' benefit night. Hodge more of a spectator just two minutes later, but Wayne not asleep. Poole fought back with two proper goals. The ball whipped quickly across field and Paul Baker with a sharp finish. The equaliser was better still. Keith Nobbs to Paul Olsen and that should have been worth a point. But with a quarter of an hour left, fullback John Butler turned up for a comfortable winner. No doubt where the work still has to be done. has a blinder against Liverpool tonight it's Everton's fault their promising young goalkeeper Jason Kearden would have played but he's on loan Everton don't want him cup tied so Fox returns to the Stoke team manager Lou Macari has had his moments at Anfield his plans tonight revolve around a defence containing three central defenders Ian Scott replaces the injured David Kevin in midfield Mark Steen, Macari's other loan signing from Oxford, is also unavailable. So Tony Ellis partners top scorer Wayne Biggins in attack. Biggins has scored five times in his last three games. And still Stoke City fans pouring into the ground. David Burrows. He's got in a useful cross. Rush from nil. Ian Rush's first of the season. No doubt the first of many. And Sanford and Overson will now be joined by Ian Franson. Four six-footers for Liverpool to worry about inside their penalty area. Franson! And Stoker level! And four six-footers was one too many. Ian Franson heads home the equaliser to see amongst the following from Stoke. Tanner's forward inside the penalty area, along with Rosenthal, McManaman, Rush and Walters. It's Marsh, in towards Rosenthal. Nickel trying to make something of it. Rosenthal back for Tanner, had to strike it, gets the crossbar and in by Rush. Liverpool back in front. Rush is second of the night. Just under 20 minutes to play. The full marks for Stoke City. They're going to throw on another striker here. They're bringing Tony Ellis off. And Tony Kelly will come on in his place. Very pacey. Forced his way into the team at the back end of last season. And he is Wayne Biggins' new partner up the front. Change Grobelar and Tony Kelly has equalised. The substitute draws it level. Just two minutes to go. It's a dream ticket for those Stoke City fans. A dream substitution for Lou Macari and Stoke City. Right through the goalkeeper's legs. But Grobelar really was left to face the music by a dreadful back pass. They'll defend this scoreline now as if their lives depend upon it. Stoke City are halfway to paradise. Lou Macari won't entertain any celebrations yet, but he can now entertain genuine hopes of springing the surprise of the round thanks to that late equaliser by Tony Kelly. Great, great night for those Stoke City fans. There'll be five times as many inside the Victoria ground for the second leg. You won't be able to get a ticket for love nor money because of that scoreline. Liverpool 2, Stoke City 2.
So a fabulous atmosphere here as Liverpool kick off, no doubt needing all their European experience of two-leg ties to survive this one. Stoke really fired up against the Liverpool side, which has managed just one win in their last seven games. Liverpool tonight in their chain strip of green shirts and white shorts. Stoke City in their famous red and white stripes. And it's Liverpool attacking from left to right. Burrows. Walters on the left. That's a dangerous cross. Rush is in there. And it's a goal by the man for Liverpool. And now Kelly with the opportunity to relieve the little bit of pressure on Stoke. That's a terrible ball to Rush. Saunders has to score. And Saunders has scored. And Stoke committed suicide. And it was Tony Kelly who made the mistake that could have cost his club a place in the competition. The big guns go forward, Sanford, Overson. No Cranston this time, he's gone off. And it's chipped straight into the mix, but Burroughs gets it clear. Beeston winning it back. Kennedy forward, that's not a bad ball. It was actually bounces for Overson and Hooper under pressure and Beeston with the shot and Liverpool a bit lucky to survive that one and back in it comes and has it gone in has it I think it might have been a handball before it did cross the line and that's what the referee has given a penalty can Biggins bring them back in here he can with just under a quarter of an hour to go Stoke City have got hope it's Stoke City 1 Liverpool 2 Biggins penalty has given them a little bit of a lifeline 4-3 now to Liverpool on aggregate Manaman man -man on the right playing it forward Houghton has got into a good position here and Houghton's done well and looks for Walters and that clinches it for Liverpool Mark Walters gets the goal with a lot of help from Ray Houghton. Stoke City have played very well. They've, they've played the way that they know how. They've tried desperately to break Liverpool down. At times they've succeeded, at times they've been unlucky. Hooper coming out again, and he's beaten, is he? Yes! And at times they've scored. Biggins has done it again from the free kick which Liverpool were furious about because they felt that uh, Stoke stole a few yards here a good header Biggins second of the game this place will absolutely explode with noise if Stoke could get another now and here's the man who might Biggins and it comes to Butler the fullback oh what a moment that could have been for the Liverpool born fullback if he could have shown just a touch of composure then. As Fox hits it forward one more time, that's the end. A splendid cup tie here, and third division Stoke City really played their part in making Graham Souness and Liverpool sweat to the end. Liverpool's goals by McManaman, Saunders and Walters against two from Biggins for Stoke City, one of them from the penalty spot, producing the final scoreline of the Victoria ground. Of Stoke City 2, Liverpool 3. It was 40 years ago that Huddersfield last won at Stoke, so perhaps Owen Hans' side didn't expect too much at the Victoria ground. 
Fortunately, though, they had the striker bang in form. Ewan Roberts reacting quickly to steer in the first with goalkeeper Kirtan apparently tying his boot laces. Three minutes later, a Chris Marsden free kick. Roberts slipped his marker to make it 2-0. This mark you on a ground where they haven't seen a home defeat all season. Just one blot for a town side that had lost its last two games when Mick Kennedy sent Wayne Biggins streaking towards the town goal. Peter Jackson tugged at the shirt. And we all know what happens next in those circumstances these days. There's the evidence, and a few seconds later, for Jackson, there was the red card. But his team still went on to win. Stoke City nil, Huddersfield Town 2. Decided to come and didn't. It's Overson again. Stoke City go 2 1 up. Sinclair got a good punch. Williams with a shot. It's been turned in by Goodman.
ball from Bates to Holdsworth. Good tackle. Smiley. An outswinger. Bates. Reading made an unfortunate start. Lyndon Jones putting through his own goal after just 20 minutes. But things went from bad to worse for the Berkshire side. First, Floyd Street was sent off for a professional foul, and then Kevin Dillon was dismissed for his second bookable offence. In the second half, John Butler then scored a neat second goal for Stoke, and Mark Steen shook off the Reading defence to make the final score. Stoke 3, Reading 0. Stoke City should be delighted that this is one of the day's surviving fixtures. They haven't lost to Hull City for 32 years. Two big friends are foes today. John Pearson plays the fourth game of his loan spell from Barnsley up front for Hull and comes face to face with Noel Blake, his one time colleague at Leeds United, who is centre half for Stoke in the absence of the suspended Vince Overson. Chipped up it is around the penalty spot is Blake. Still the chance is here. Russell with a shot and Kevin Russell scores. A look of delight on the face of Kevin Russell, who's on loan to Stoke City from Leicester. And in fact, that is his first goal for Stoke. And he's really potted it through the gap here. Blake had gone for it. And when it's nodded down to him by Pearson, it's slotted into the corner of that net, wide of Witness's right hand. So Kevin Russell's first goal of the season gives Stoke a 20th minute lead. Ebenezer good His friends call him easy When he is the main geezer And he vibe up the place Like no other man could He's refined He's sublime He makes you feel fine They're very much maligned And misunderstood But if you know he's He's a real crowd pleaser He's ever so good He's ever needs a good You see that he's mischievous Mysterious and devious When he circulates Amongst the people in the place Once you know he's fun And something of a genius He gives a grin That goes around Face to face to face Backwards and then forwards Forwards and then backwards He's a a geezer He loves to muscle in That's about the time The crowd will shout The name of Ezer As he's punched in the corner Laughing by the base bin City here to cause Albion problems. And it was a good header and it's in, yes! Sanford got the vital header in, and as we thought, the presence of those big six footers counted.
18 people were arrested and 15 evicted from the ground during the game against Stoke City. One man has been charged with assaulting the referee. Meanwhile, the FA has begun an inquiry which could result in severe punishment for the club. And this was Paul Barnes' goal that gave Stoke a late equaliser on Saturday, prompted goalkeeper Alan Miller to claim he'd been fouled, and minutes later, the pitch invasion. And that's when the blame starts being apportioned. I must admit, there were an awful lot of suspect decisions by the referee, and perhaps it was only he that could have given the goal. Uh, but having said that, there's no way you can condole violence for, for any uh, reason, and you know, we don't take any satisfaction out of what's happened here today at all. It was this last-minute attempt by Birmingham City to snatch a winning goal, which set off the worst crowd violence of the season, and yet again blighted the club's reputation. Birmingham's fans flooded onto the pitch, and despite loudspeaker appeals, they headed for where the Stoke City... Referee Roger Wiseman, who stopped the game, was himself hit by someone or something and had to be helped away. So too did the policewoman who was caught up in the fighting. Although the match was restarted by a senior linesman for a final minute's play, Birmingham City realised that they now face an almost certain fine and other disciplinary action. Tonight, as calls were made for an inquiry, police finished off herding Birmingham supporters back home and Stokes fans back to the Potteries. Terry Lloyd, ATM, Birmingham.